Well, we hit the jackpot. Look at this place. Isn't this amazing? Wisteria. Today, a whole bunch of facts about something you might have seen but know nothing about. Today, we are talking about everything you need to know about this beautiful yet deadly plant called wisteria. Now, you may not have known most of what you actually see is an invasive Chinese wisteria. So I'm gonna give you a few facts today about this beautiful plant, and you will probably not be able to see this plant again in the same way afterwards. So let's start with the taxonomy. The most common ones are a Japanese wisteria, Chinese wisteria, and then there's two American species of wisteria. This is my American wisteria, but the most aggressive of all of the wisteria is this one back here, and that's the Chinese wisteria. All right, should we go on a treasure hunt, guys, and actually go look for some? We'll see how many we can find. We found the mother load over here. So far, we've counted about 15 different groups alongside the road. This is the most there's been right here. There's no denying at this stage, it is beautiful. This is incredible. It's like we're in an enchanted purple forest. But of course the flowers are only part of the story. The vines and what they do to the forest is the other half. We've got beautiful flowers right now coming down from this plant. Now this is a super, super fragrant plant. I just wanna see what it tastes like. All right, now let's stop for just a second and let's talk about the toxicity. You do not wanna eat these flowers, even though there are a lot of reports online that say you can eat them. Uh, I tried a few of them yesterday and even though they're sweet, they taste a little bit like orchids, um, my throat started to burn a little bit and I had a stomach ache later in the day and I only had about four or five flowers just to test it out. So, I'll let you know if they're really toxic. All parts of this plant, as far as I can tell, do have toxicity to them. In particular, don't eat the seeds or seed pods. They're very dangerous. Crazy, fuzzy, giant seed pods. And then when those seeds, here's when I popped open already. But that, of course, is only part of what's dangerous about this plant. It is a mess. Like This plant knows what it's doing because it takes over an entire area. You can see it, it looks like it's strangling the poor trees, because you know why? That's exactly what it's doing. It's gotta get up that tree, because it can't get the sunlight it needs way down here on the ground. It's gotta climb as high as it can and be like, oh good, there's the sun, let me make my flowers. Wisteria plants are beautiful and they can take over and kill different areas, but you can also train them to be beautiful plants you can have in your yard. What else have you noticed out here? That there are killing trees and making the trees fall down and snap in half. Yeah, that one is snapped in half completely. Do you know another name for these? Super it's hot. called a liana. Lianas oh, are wood, vine. woody vines. This is the vine of a wisteria and I, it got cut and it's actually shooting out new growth from the sides here. Interesting tidbit. These Chinese wisteria, also the American ones, only go in this direction up the tree. So if you're looking down on the tree, that's actually counterclockwise. And then they go all the way up. The Japanese wisteria goes clockwise. That's one way you can tell the difference. This right here, that's wisteria, and you can see it's going in a counterclockwise direction. This one's choking this tree. Not that one. That one! That's a wisteria climbing up a wisteria. Oh, this is in the bean one. family. It fixes its own nitrogen, so where it grows is anywhere. It actually does really much better, flowers better, in areas with poor nitrogen. So you don't want to fertilize it with nitrogen if you want to encourage it to flower. In fact, what you would do is you'd stress the tree out. So maybe periods of drought or you'd rough up the, the trunk or you need to prune them heavily because pruning encourages 
the flowering. In times of stress, they flower. And that's because they say to themselves, oh my gosh, things are going crazy. I've got to reproduce and send out my seeds before I die. Let's do a quick botany lesson. This right here is a whole bunch of flowers. So this is not the flower, there's a bunch of flowers. Oftentimes you would call that an inflorescence. That is a group of flowers. I'm so glad we saw this. So what do you know about Wisteria August? That they're fun to climb. Wisteria. Wisteria. You can make rope out of this. I'm not gonna go into all the details, but here's the gist of it. Essentially, take as much of the vine off of a tree or along the ground as you can. And this vine here is what you will make cordage out of. Summer vines are the best. Then you beat it with a rock, just enough to break up the woody material. Then you take a little knife, slice it, try to peel off the long fibers. You can start to peel this off. Then you do this reverse wrap. I have all the details on stoneageman.com. Search for wisteria and making rope. This is what Stone Age Man is really supposed to all, all be about. Basically taking stuff that you've seen in nature but you might not know a lot about and then walking you through what's cool about it, especially how you might be able to interact with it. That's why I talked about cordage and can you eat it, um, that kind of thing. But I like to throw out little tidbits, sciencey tidbits as well. Uh, that's my script. That's on my script. <laughs> uh, if you haven't subscribed already, subscribe right now. All right, we'll see you in the next one. Woo! All right, I'm coming. We're getting out of here. This is hard. It's like a, it's like a maze.